here the Linaro Connect, and uh, who are you? Uh, I'm Shri Kote. I'm the uh, Chief Software Architect for Comcast, and I also run engineering and operations for our technology and product group. So there's been a, it's, it's a new announcement, right? There's a new group here at Linaro. Right. Yeah. So we uh, we actually recently joined the Lenaro uh, uh, the Lenaro Foundation, and we are um, um, working with them to form this new group called the Lenaro Home Group. And the idea is to really take all the great work that they've done around standardizing the kernel and the software and the operating system for ARM devices, um, and extend those services beyond um, just the kernel and the tool chain into all of the multimedia services you need to be effective at building devices for the home. Uh, just like in the mobile space, it's been very, very fragmented, and we're hoping that we can um, really innovate and allow a lot of technology companies to add, to focus on areas of differentiation instead of all the stuff that's the same, like basic video decoding and and all the all the you know security stuff that has to happen for for media devices. So. This is uh, the set-top box, right? Uh, it's the set-top box. It's the modem. It's the gateway. It's really all the devices in the home. And if you think about it, the boundaries between all those devices are starting to blur. And then once you start to think about all of the Internet of Things stuff that people are talking about that are going to layer on top of that, both in terms of communications and inter interoperability, and then all the smart TVs, and of course, all of, your, all of your smart devices and screens that are connecting through the devices in the home, um, it starts to become, uh, the, the, the boundaries between the ecosystems are trying to blur a lot more. But certainly, the most visible element is uh, the set-top box that's connected to your television. Because the set-top boxes are awesome and have been for a while, like Linux, there's many Linux set-top boxes for like 10 years or? Yeah, but you're 100% right. There have been yeah. Linux set-top boxes, but I, you know, our, our, our view, my view, our, our, our statement on this is saying Linux is only slightly better than saying computer, right? It, there's so much variance in terms of kernels and glibcs and tool chains and all of this sort of stuff that it really hasn't provided a great foundation for innovation and every company ends up redoing the same work over and over and over again. And so what we'd like to do is, is get people off of the hamster wheel <laughs> and really making forward progress, and that's where we think uh, Lenaro fits into the equation. Um, you know, Steve Jobs used to have this line about uh, if you care about the software, then you care about the hardware. Um, and we feel like obviously the inverse is true as well, and that's that's why we think the Lenaro Foundation work is so important, um, the Lenaro Group work is so important. We feel like if you care about ARM, you should care about Lenaro, uh, because. Um, you know, the, the fragmentation uh, at the operating system level means that, that people don't get to focus on, like I said, the, all the things that make it special and different. Because, I mean, set top boxes have been awesome, but it's been, I don't know if I should say that, but it's been kind of a mess. Like, I, I, and uh, some companies are spending, like, all the efforts just to make sure it doesn't crash no, I or I something like that, no, right? No, I, I think that's right. I mean, I think there's been, you know, certainly there have been a lot of people trying to do some innovative things in, in the television space, um, but it really hasn't hit that escape velocity. It feels like the early days of, you know, when feature phones were making the transition to smartphones. Um, and so, um, you know, we think we've been doing a lot, um, in particular with the work we've been doing around the X1 platform, uh, to really further the state of the industry and to do things that are competitive with what you're seeing from the best of the best in the industry. Um, and ultimately, you know, for us to make forward progress, we need the whole industry to make forward progress. It really is true uh, that a rising tide lifts all boats. Um, and, you know, we think that, um, you know, we, we have a boat and we, we want to see the water level rise. And uh, people, maybe especially in the U.S., spend so much time watching TV. And it's it needs to be... I mean, it's much more time than, for example, going on the internet. Or yeah, something yeah, like. it, it's very true. I mean, if you look at the the amount of time that people spend on the internet or watching video on the internet, um, it, they still talk about hours of month uh, of how much you know of of what the type of usage. And if you look at television, it's it's hours a day, right? The average U.S. household watches something like 5.5 hours of television a day. If you look at um, the X1 platform, it's it's more than seven hours a day, right? Um, and so. It's a lot of usage, and what we want to do is make an experience that's great and fulfilling and exciting and also participates in your life. It's crazy that this large, the largest and most social screen in your house doesn't participate in the communications and information life. It's just been in your passive entertainment. Um, and even there, there's so much more it could do in terms of discovery and access to new types of content. And so, um, you know, we're pretty excited about the work that we're doing. We're seeing fantastic business results. Um, and we're seeing um, great engagement from our customers. And we did a lot, for example, around the Olympics, the Winter Olympics stuff. We did a lot of, a lot of what content that was available on the TV, we made available on the TV, but we also made available a lot of things that were only available on the internet or on the tablet, we made available on the TV. And we saw just you know, fantastic engagement from our customers, right? So this is really fascinating. Uh, 
the internet and the setup box and video on demand and all that I don't know if I can say revolution or something, <laughs> but it's like uh, the potential is that it's going to be well, TV is going to be very different, maybe it, ten, five years, ten very, years very, from very now. different. And you know, people have been talking about convergence for twenty years now, right? That all the screens and technologies and media types and all going to mix together. And I think you're really starting to see that happen. And our view is, you know, in 2010, television was a thing you hung on the wall. In 2014, television is a service that's available to every screen in your life. And in the same way, all of those great things that you do on all those other devices. Um, in terms of information and communication and personalization and self-expression, those should also be available on the television, right? It's, it's just this big screen. And so we think about our mission, uh, certainly with the, with the Lenara Home Group and um, more broadly, if you think about the Xfinity service that, that Comcast offers, we think about it as really um, you know, revolutionizing the home, right? And really enabling that convergence from you know, your security tablet to your Internet of Things to your broadband connection to, the, to best in class Wi Fi to, to a, an engaging and compelling experience on the television. So, Android has been a giant, giant success on mobile, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not. Uh, um, it might it somehow be also appropriate in the group that you're talking about? It, it, it might. You know, I mean, and certainly we think that uh, obviously Google's done a fantastic job with, with Android. Um, you know, we've been doing some work to um, look at what it takes to run Android applications. There's a lot of differences between the mobile space and the embedded space. One of the biggest ones is around the lifetime of the device. Um, and in fact, there's, there's multiple tiers of even that question. Um, meaning you know, televisions last a lot longer in people's houses and set-top boxes last a lot longer um, than, um, than phones. And then on top of that, the, unlike say a, a laptop or a, or a mobile phone, the lifetime of the glass and the lifetime of the compute also tend to be very, very different. Um, there's also a lot of different requirements around um, security and robustness and, and you know, the expectation of when I turn on my TV, I always expect it to work. You know what I mean? It just, it, it really is, a, is something that people engage with and rely on in, in a very different way than even, than quite frankly, even their mobile phone, right? Again, people still talk about hours a month, not hours a day in terms of usage. And so, um, you know, it's something we're watching very, very carefully. Google's done a great job. And, and part of what we want to do with, the, with the, our engagement with Lenaro is take advantage of all the driver work and kernel work and other stuff that's going in to optimize Android to, to also pay benefits in, in other domains. All right, so uh, uh, Linaro, yep. can, can you say, what do you think about Linaro? Is it like uh, amazing what's going on? Uh, I think Linaro's pretty impressive. I, you know, it's really, um, you know, most of the other, uh, if you look at the landscape of, of system on chip vendors and the most of the silicon manufacturers like the Intels of the world and the Broadcoms of the world, um, you know, they really, um, they maintain unity of vision by maintaining control of their roadmap, and it's worked really, really well for them. I think the whole ARM model has been a, a, a much more egalitarian model, much more about licensing out and, and letting people innovate um, in, in, um, in lots of different domains. And that's been fantastic at the hardware level, but there's been a huge gap at the software level. And I think what the Lara Group is really trying to do is, uh, is close that gap so that you can unlock not just all the hardware innovation, but all, this, all these new types of software innovation. Because in that regard, ARM's been actually been trailing a little bit behind what's been happening in, the, in other spaces. And so we're very excited by what, what uh, the Lara Group is doing. All right, so uh, looking forward to a 4K uh, crazy video on demand and yes. all that stuff. And yes, sir. And uh, enough bandwidth for all that to work, and uh... oh, I mean, you'll, there's never enough bandwidth. <laughs> there's never enough compute. There's never enough memory. And there's never enough bandwidth. And uh, you know, I think that's a big part of why, as technologists, we all have jobs, right? Uh, but you know, we do think that we can certainly transform the experience in the home and transform the expectations of what um, services in the home mean. And you would like to see many more people join. Uh, we, of course, you know, the, a big part of what makes us work is community. Um, and, you know, while there's no obligations not to do fragmentation, because I think, some, you know, communities only work if people join because they want to, not because they have to, and if they only participate because it's in their interest, not because they're, they're threatened. Um, you know, we think that the more people that participate, the more that, as I said, we can all focus on the areas of innovation and differentiation as opposed to everyone redoing the stuff that's the same. And I don't know if you can answer, but the hardware right now that's being used in the set-top box yes. at, at Comcast, yes. is it ARM or, or something else? So very little ARM actually t um, today at Comcast, and very little ARM typically in the U.S. Uh, provider industry, but that's something we want to change, and, and, I, and that is a big part of why we're, we're present in the Lenaro in the Lenaro group. Most of it historically has been... Um, has been MIPS based, um, and uh, you know well, we, we're now one of the largest deployments of, of Intel set-top boxes, which we've been very pleased with. But we'd also like to be able to take advantage of all the innovation that's happening in the mobile space uh, with ARM. 
and uh, the set-top box becomes uh, more and more, there's more and more performance, it becomes a home console, it becomes like a desktop. Um, becomes a, I, you know, I, I, do I don't know if it becomes like a desktop. Certainly it's going to get more powerful. There's no question. That's obviously going to happen, and we all benefit from Moore's Law, um, both the cost curves and the performance curves. But I think that one of the major things that happened with the shift to the smartphone is that we moved away from computers and to computing devices. And so there's no question that these are going to be very, very powerful computing devices, but I think they're going to be much more oriented around consumer electronics and um, you know, much more around tasks and a little less around general compute. And enabling extra screens doing stuff. Uh, not only extra screens doing stuff, but also a lot more on the primary screen as well. You know what I mean? I think that while it's um, true that everybody wants to do stuff on their tablets and on their PCs, and you see a lot of the service that we build are oriented around making consumption of services on those screens great, it's also true that that screen is just a large, fantastic screen in your house. And, and what we've been finding is as we make that richer and more powerful, people engage with that even more.